On this episode, we talked to three crazy Snapchatters and learned all about their lives. Vey, Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 196 of the Ask Gary V Show. As you can see, we continue the theme. Though we did throw in, what was it, 195, or was finally me by myself here? Is that airing today? That's it? That's one I, it's all fucking confusing, D Rock. Just traveling with me everywhere. Anyway, uh, we continue the theme of having guests on, which I'm enjoying quite a bit. And similar to the influencer show where we talked about YouTube and Snapchat and different things of that nature, on this episode, we have, ha- we have three phenomenally talented individuals that have different skill sets from being amazing at sweating to drawing. Um, and we'll, we'll allow them all a few seconds now to uh, explain themselves, but this is a very hardcore focus on something we've been talking about for a couple of years, but intensely for the last six months and really intensely for the last three months, which is Snapchat. All these three lovely, massively attractive individuals are all very influential and deep into their Snapchat universe. So, so kids, uh, why don't you uh, introduce yourself to the Vayner Nation, tell them who you are, um, and a little bit about yourself. Let's keep these to 30, 40 seconds, and then, I'll, uh, and then we'll expand on these things. But I, what I want is your name, w- what you kind of do, and then how you kind of stumbled into the Snapchat universe. Let's start with the lady. Okay, I can do it in 10 seconds. Respect. So, <laughs> Hi, my name is Simon Q. I go on Snapchat by Simon Q, but my name is Simon Kiamko, and I do Snapchat art. Um, I draw on Snapchat and tell stories, and I use art as kind of like an on-the-go special effects. And how did, how, how did your Snapchat journey start? It started off actually with the 11 second. I was an admirer of other people's art, and I created a website, and it became a discovery site. And then I grew What did uh, you build it on top I of? I built it. It was first. Was it a Tumblr or Instagram? It was wasn't it a Tumblr. Blogger. It was it was blogger. a blogger, and then after that, it migrated into a WordPress. Got and it. so yeah, so it's updated site right now. But basically, that's how I started, and like the community grew, and then we started helping each other grow. It's amazing. Yeah. Very nice. And you're from where? I'm from Arkansas, Little Rock, Arkansas. Love that. All right, my man. Uh, my name's Mike Platko. Go by. Uh, M. Platko on Snapchat. Uh, like Cyrene, artist, uh, storyteller. Um, I downloaded Snapchat just like everyone else did, just because people were talking about it. Started making these insanely intricate drawings of myself as Harry Potter. Had a bunch of them, put them on Tumblr, went viral, started getting calls from brands. So that's my full time career. That's amazing. And, and where are you from? Boston. Boston. Are you a Patriots fan? Uh, no, I'm an Eagles fan. Great. That was huge. That made me very happy. <laughs> my man? You're, uh, you're, you're, you're sweating because you just you ran. I have to get here. I already missed my meeting with this guy. Huge mistake. Yeah. Billion dollar mistake. Billion. <laughs> ah. uh, my name's Taylor Nikolai, Taylor.Nikolai on Snapchat. Uh, the dot for emphasis? Uh, there was a girl who took Taylor Nikolai before I could and I offered to buy from her and she blocked me on Snapchat. How much did you offer? I offered $500. That's a solid this was number. like a year ago. Solid so number. It was like a, a so, anyway, I'm Taylor Dot Nikolai. You pronounce my name Nikolai. Uh, and the song is N I K O L A I. That's how you spell Nikolai. I'm really awkward, and that's why people like me, I guess. I love it. You can sing. Can you sing my name? Yes, yeah, sing my name too. Yeah. Try to spell Vaynerchuk right now. V A Y N E R. C H U K. Oh, he got it. No C. Cool. Get that clip. I want that to be my ring. (laughs) Um, All right. So look. I'm from Minnesota, and I'm a Vikings fan. I love that. I know the owners of the Vikings quite well. They're from Springfield, New Jersey, where Wine Library is from, where my career started. Do you want to get me some tickets? Sure. Cool. Do you want them to be good? Yes. Okay. Done. So, gang, I think uh, we're gonna answer some questions. India, you're here too. And you also draw on Snapchat. I do. You do? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I could assume nothing. Someone doesn't watch my stories. I don't watch anybody's stories. I know. I really don't. I'm the worst. Um, and so, will you now up your drawing game? Have you been motivated by the first 40 yes. seconds of the show? Yes, already. 
Oh, Nick, <laughs> show this. This is amazing, DRock. Please show what's happening here. Nick, why don't you tell everybody who you are, which makes what you're doing right now way more fun for everybody. Well, what's up, everybody? I'm Nick Cicero, CEO and founder of Del Mondo, and we work with Snapchat influencers, and we have Snapchat analytics. So we brought these three guys to the show. <laughs> and I'm doing the microphone. Yes, he is. All right, India. Let's 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 so get into this show. Three video questions. Okay. They're gonna ask you questions. Great. Anyway, let's do it. Talk. Great. Awesome. From Mateo. Mateo. Are you guys good? No. 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 Should I wait? Yeah. What? But doesn't my mic pick stuff up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. So the sound will be not as good for a second. Huh? Well, I mean, this is for the video, so it's fine. Do you have one because you like wine? Me? So up there you'll see, I grew up in the yeah, wine business. Yeah, I'm, I'm up. Yeah, jokes. so. These yeah. are jokes? Of course. I got it, following along. But I never, I, I don't like assuming people know stuff, you know? No. I think it's a douchey move. Cute. Who's that? That's my brother. I figured. It's true. Is it okay if I post this from CEO to Mike Holder? Yes. <laughs> That's exactly what you should be posting. That's fair game. So I actually have uh, like seven million Twitter followers. Um, Amazing. Friends with Jerome. Yes. Like I was the guy who first posted his finds on like the internet. That's amazing. Yeah. That's really cool. You have it under your account or across a bunch of different sites. Uh, Funny. 30, 33 different so like, Twitter uh, accounds. I run Funny Vines so cool. yes. on Twitter. Yep. Um, like all the big Twitter <laughs> accounts. Shut up! <laughs> you do like Way one long one of those like, all day. You should just do one long one all day. Like, Can we go? Yeah. I have a client meeting. Yeah. We're good? Yeah. All right, India, let's get into this. Hey, Gary. I'm Matteo from Italy. Amazing country. Super girl, super food, but the highest rate of gambling addiction. I help a no profit that operates in the space, and uh, I would like to hear from you on this point. As a marketer, how to involve our members to spread the no gambling cause, so to reach more and more people. Thanks a lot. You rock. Okay, so the no gambling cause. Italy has great food and great women, but a gambling problem. And so how do we? How do you advance the no gambling cause? <laughs> We, <laughs> Matteo wants me to help him do a marketing campaign to stop people from gambling because he thinks gambling's ruining Italy. Yes. Because the the food and the girls part is fine, but the gambling is a problem. Yes. And so he wants to create a marketing campaign to stop gambling. He wants to know what your thoughts would be to advance the no gambling cause. Well, I mean, look, I think any cause. Uh, regardless of what, you know, by the way, I like gambling. Uh, but, but, you know, uh, any cause's expansion has to do with the right creative in the right medium. To me, if he's got a lot of passion to stop the gambling cause, there's a very smart strategy tying in what we're doing here to go younger. Usually the thing that you need to do to stop a movement is to go younger. It's really no different than Facebook and Snapchat even, like the generational differences. So the way you get, uh, you know, people to stop using drugs or drinking and driving and all the things that have happened in propaganda in the US to stop things that people were concerned about was you've got to win the youth culture around that subject matter and then let it mature. So I think Matteo and, and the people in Italy that want to stop the kind of gambling culture in that country should be looking more aggressively towards Snapchat and Instagram, two platforms that are doing extremely well in their country. Anything to add, youngsters? I know that's kind of a left ball question, field question. I'm not sure where India was going with that well, strategy. Andy just came to me like, that question wasn't supposed to be there, sorry. See, that made sense to me. Like, Thanks for ruining the show. Let's go to the next question. Next question. Came from Vegas. What's up, Gary? My name is Aaron Martinez, and I hope you like the hat. But my question for you is I have a YouTube channel that has grown from zero to 88,000 subscribers in a little bit under 10 months. Now, on my channel, I upload Snapchat tips and tricks, but I tried to do a little bit of other things in the earlier stages of my channel, but they didn't really work out. Going into the future of my channel, maybe passing 100,000 subscribers, what do you think I should do? Primarily stick to Snapchat or try to do different things? And if so, what? Thanks, guys, over at VaynerMedia. Hope you guys have a nice day. Uh, Aaron, I think, uh, and I'll let these guys jump in because I'm sure they have a lot to add to this. I mean, for, uh, unlike the first question. I don't 
Um, uh, You know, Aaron, I think a couple things that struck me with that question. Number one, this magical number of like 100,000 followers or your first thousand or a million, I'm telling you, and I'm telling this because I have a lot of heart for the youngsters sitting with me right now, these are the wrong metrics to reverse engineer against. More importantly, what I would need, if you were here, what I would need to know, and we were just talking for a second as DRock broke the sound, uh, um, is you know, what do you want to happen? So you know, I think one of the biggest mistakes by so many Snapchat and YouTube influencers right now is they want to become Hollywood famous because they grew up where that was the pinnacle. And to me, I keep trying to remind them, my early days with Jerome and Rudy and Brittany Furlon and that whole space with the Vine influencers that were definitely the spark that you've watched the Instagram and Snapchat thing, very different than the generation of YouTube that I grew up with, is guys, in 2022, in 2024, the most famous person is not the person that's on a TV show on MTV, it's the person that dominates this, which is the new television. Just like being a cable star wasn't interesting in the early 80s, but then eventually, if you're the number one star on an HBO show, which to remind everybody, you guys are too young for this, HBO was shit. HBO was a shit place to go in 1982, 1984, 1986. You were a BC list, D list, F list. Nobody wanted to be a Netflix star 48 months ago. Nobody. Now everybody wants to in Hollywood. So first and foremost, Aaron, I think that you need to decide what you want to happen. Do you want to get your art into the world? Is it about money? Is it about fame? And I think you need to own your vanity because way too many people try to bullshit it, number one. Number two, you got to go where the attention is. To me, enormous emphasis on Snapchat and YouTube and now look, one minute Instagram videos probably opens up a lot of creativity for a lot of people here and definitely people that are watching. So that becomes a new thing and look, musically. Uh, actually, this is a question for me real quick. Are any of the three of you playing on Musical.ly? Yeah, downloaded it after uh, hearing you talk about it a couple times. Have you kind of, have you had the time yet to spend to look at what's going on there? A Little bit. Yeah, and so this is what's so interesting, right? A lot of my YouTube celebrity friends when Vine came along, we're like, eh, and I'm like, and I'm like, you're, you came from YouTube. That's what was just being said five minutes ago. Now, then a lot of, when Snapchat came, I was telling a lot of Viners, I'm like, this thing, I'm telling you, and they're like, eh, and then, of course, now everybody's there, and now even musically, right? Like, Snapchat, it's at, at its apex, but ironically, I think the Snapchatters, and this, I'm giving you advice right now, that go and really go all in on Musical.ly are gonna win those junior high people, are gonna be here in 36 months and be like, holy shit, that was a good idea, or it could go away. But much like what happened on Vine, and this is such a good learning from Vine, and we were talking about Vine off as DRock broke the sound, and uh, you know, the people that won on Vine have been able to siphon that attention and be successful on other platforms. Not everybody. Some, and it, yeah. Exactly, not everybody. Because some of them wouldn't have held on Vine either because they didn't have enough talent to be anything more than a few minutes. But some were. And that's no different than being a really good actor on a hit show on CBS for two seasons and then coming back two years later on ABC and siphoning some of that audience and building on that momentum. These are channels and doing the right thing. So Aaron, I think, I think what you need to do is this. And I would say this for the the three individuals here who I have a lot of heart for. 80% tripling down on what works. You guys can fucking draw. You're funny and intriguing. All that stuff. Can't draw. I cannot draw as well. Can't draw. But you want to learn. Maybe someday. Never. Never. Correct. So, 80% of that and 20% experimenting. That's what you should be doing, Aaron, from my point of view. Gang? Can I say something? Yes. Nobody cares about subscribers, nobody cares about followers. It's all about influence. If you can actually create a sustainable amount of influence or like something that you can actually push to other platforms, that's something people care about. Numbers is not something people are going to care about in the future. 100,000 subscribers or a million subscribers, if nobody's consistently watching your videos, nobody cares. I agree with that. I mean, look, brands brands care now because they're not sophisticated in their language, right? They won't three years from now. Well, it depends, right? Like, so the answer, the answer is, look, results should and always do matter at the end. There's a lot of things that can be, a metric can be accepted by a marketplace, like Nielsen ratings, that doesn't map to a result, yet the entire $80 billion advertising industry, most of it doesn't quantify against actual results. They quantify against metrics. I'm with you. And by the way, all my behavior maps to your rant. Right. So, that's what I'm living. But no question. Metrics I, in general are broken. The, the whole industry is broken on metrics. Yeah, I mean, the, the metric that should matter is how many did you sell? Yeah. Of whatever that is. And what I mean sell, it's like, look, 
uh, you know, I want you to donate to my nonprofit. Like that's a result. Or you did a show and how many people showed up to it to like watch you paint for an hour, India. And so, uh, and so uh, I, think, um, I think that's the case. Aaron, any thoughts on, on Aaron's questions? Um, it's funny, we all actually know Aaron. Yes. Um, and uh, you hate him. No, he's great. He's, 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 he's awesome. He does, um, he's like the nicest guy. Yeah, and he does like Snapchat hat. tutorials yes. and tips and tips yep. on, on his yep. YouTube. Yep. But um, absolutely, that's something that we need to um, expand upon because he's got to identify what it is that he wants to be, not just someone with 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Whatever he wants to turn this career into and then play to that. Yeah, Aaron, I think you've clearly got some chops and I think the question becomes what what do you at this young, and by the way, for all three of you, what do you at this young of an age want to happen and then try to project who you think you are in the balance of vanity, money, uh, happiness, you know, uh, work-life balance. These are a lot of things you have to project at a young age. That, yeah, I mean, right. And, and by the way, everybody's got different percentages of it, two minutes. And, uh, and that's that. Let's move. I, I've got this client thing. We broke sound. We were late. Fucking people running. Ben. Yo Gary, what's up? It's Ben from Israel. I'm a professional Snapchat artist and a YouTuber. And I have one very important question to ask you. In a country that is known as a startup nation, there's one problem, one ironic problem. As much as we're innovative, the problem is we suck in social media marketing. Now, people here just don't get it that what we do the creators on social media such as Snapchat and YouTube are doing the correct thing, but they don't give us a lot of room to work. They don't pay us to get our job done. The thing is, people like us want to live from something we love, and we know how to talk to the right audience. Now, how can we convince the mainstream media that what we do is the right thing? How can we convince someone so big as the mainstream media to change their ways and give us, the underdog, the chance to create something amazing, to do something that really counts. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. And love your work. What's his name? Ben. Ben. What do you have for Ben? Well, like what you said, I mean, everything's converting. This is the new TV. And so if the mainstream media is still thinking about like the old style, they're going to miss out on the new audience that's becoming of this. And I think that, I mean, like there's not much convincing. They can just look at the numbers. They can look at all the people that are on Snapchat right now. If less people are watching TV. I'm not watching TV anymore. If you um, ask all the other people, they're on YouTube, they're on Snapchat. And it's, it's becoming, you know, just outdated. Yeah, absolutely, go to where the audiences are, and if you have something compelling to say, say it. Make that content. It doesn't matter if. It's but how do you, how do we answer his question, which is how how do you think you know agreed? We're all gonna we're all gonna head nod. What about convincing these individuals to do it? You, you're in a tough spot, right? Because it's coming to you right now, right? Yeah. Like when when the inbound traffic's coming to you and saying, "Hey, can you draw this for my brand?" You're not worried about convincing because you don't have to. Thoughts? I mean, like. First off, who cares what the mainstream media thinks? Like, just do what you're going to do anyway and be consistent about it. And then, like, success will eventually come if you're talented. Um, outside of that, like, how do you get what you deserve to be paid? Well, you're going to get what you deserve to be paid. And if you're not getting what you deserve to be paid, then ask for what you deserve to be paid. Or, and I, I agree, very honestly, like, I, I, I wasn't, like, super, I, that was a great question, but, like, like tough shit. Like, yeah. like, like, my whole life has been predicated on selling something that is ahead of the market. You have to wait. The answer is the market's going to pay you for what it think it's worth. Like, people like us. Here are a couple things that I'm going to pick at, and I love you. I mean, thank you for the kind words. But people like us want to get paid for something we want to create. So does everybody. Like, everybody wants to be able to get paid to do what they love. Every single athlete that grows up from six to fourteen years old would like to be paid to be a professional athlete. You know, another thing that I liked is I'm a, and I've heard this from this sector, including you guys, I'm a professional YouTube and Snapchat. What does that mean? Like, do we just get to say we're professionals? Like, it sounds like if you're gonna be a professional. I, I even hate the word influencer. Uh, I hate the well, word influencer. these get into semantics. I've talked a lot about this on the show. Like, you can call it whatever you, you like, we can call it whatever you want, but like, to me, being a professional means that you actually do, do it for a living. And so, a lot, too many people are like, I'm that without being able to do it for a living. This is what your platform is trying to solve. So look, here's what I would say. You know, tough shit. You live in Israel, tough shit. They're not spending as much money. 
tough, you know, the other thing is you've got to prove it. One thing that a lot of influencers are not proving is, yeah, you're talking to the right, listen, if you're selling insurance to 40 to 60 year olds, or do, you have the, do you have the audacity to tell them that they should be on Snapchat to sell? What you're gonna say, if you really get put into a corner is, no, I don't know, I think, when, you know, it's so funny, I love watching, everybody's, everybody under 27 is, right? And so you're, if you're selling to 27 and unders in the US, then Snapchat and Instagram becomes very compelling. If you're selling retirement home space, like Snapchat's probably not the right platform today. I do think Snapchat, much like Facebook, will age up in a way that most people don't believe. I do believe that in 24 months, most 55 year old men are on Snapchat. And I think that confuses people. Sooner than that. We'll see. What's on the record, we're about to find out. What, what happens is, is that it either happens or it doesn't. And here's the more interesting part. Whether or not it happens at all, sooner than two years, in two years, is kind of irrelevant because whatever does happen is what you have to act around. And so I would tell you that there's plenty of people making money off of Snapchat and YouTube. You have to go and grab it to your point and more importantly, if you don't, then maybe you're not a good salesperson and maybe you're just a creative and you actually need a sales partner. There's that part of it. Because the creative world and the business world are very often at odds. There are a few that cross and have both skills and mom and dad had sex at the right moment and gave them those talents, but a lot of people don't. And that's something else that we have to factor in. India, that's it for those two? Got it. All right, well do you guys have any questions? Yeah, actually. Um, so obviously you're someone who has an intimate knowledge of how Vine stars uh, came to be and yes. you know, which ones took the right steps yes. and didn't so much. Um, someone like Cyrene, like myself, storytelling, drawing, yes. um, on Snapchat, a platform that's, you know, it's vertical. Where do you think a logical next step would be if we want to continue making content like we're making, knowing that Snapchat can't just be the only thing that we're on. Well look, I mean, I think, you know, I think there's a, several different things in play here. Number one, first and foremost, I really recommend to you and this genre, I would love for you guys to make the physical manifestation of these products at scale. Like, I think one of the great opportunities for you guys, this is, this is not answering your question, I think I just wanna get this in the show before I forget. I, I truly believe that both of you have the ability to make millions of dollars a year in prints of your drawings if you figure out that connection point. And you need to think about that. That is like a real life thing that you need to figure out tomorrow. I'm sure you are. But I mean like, I think you have the ability to take a snap that you draw on top of and have 41,000 people buy that $19 poster at scale. I think it's a real business for the artists of Snapchat, so that's, that's, that's random. As far as your question, which is, if Snapchat was to only have a 24 month more run because something came along, like, you know, I, I think, I think you have to understand, I know, I think you have to understand that, um, that, uh, that your art is your skill set. And so it's funny, on Snapchat right now, that's peaking very aggressively. For Taylor, his, his skill translates to every medium. Your advantage, because there's drawing capabilities on top, is different. It is unique to that platform. And that is something you have to think about. It's, and, and you have to think about what does that actually mean. And, uh, and I would say that yours doesn't naturally transpose into everywhere else because it stands out. I mean, I still can't wrap my head around that picture you drew. Like, it's so crazy. But I don't think if you drew it on a piece of paper or if that was on a post on Tumblr that I would react the same way. And so that's just truth and that's just the reality. And guess what? That's just life. Right, like the people that were amazing at radio because they had amazing voices and they were comfortable to be in a booth and then it went to television and they were scared of the camera, they lost. And so that's something to think about, that's just real. Doesn't necessarily transpose. Listen, you guys heard the knocks. Unfortunately, he was late and he broke sound and so we're gonna have to wrap up the show. I apologize guys, but I have to go. Actually, you know what, let's do something interesting. Why don't you guys talk for five minutes and wrap up the show. India, D-Rock, do your thing. I'm out. They're gonna finish, and we'll see you soon. Love you guys. Yep. First time, it's rare. Do your thing, figure it out. For everyone who's watching, who's in the VR Nation and still thinks Snapchat is a terrible investment of their time, what would you say to them? Just a very easy, like very simple question. You can't, I mean, something that is 
there are so many people using it, it's not a waste of time. It's a beautiful app that is just as conducive to absorbing content as creating content. So my big mission is to get people to go out and make things, and Snapchat is the perfect segue into that. So for that reason alone, you should go out and, 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 and learn about making things. It's incredibly satisfying for me. Download Snapchat, get on it, and, and start doing cool stuff. I why would it be a waste of time? It's like billions of followers are on it. Um, and that's, that's a platform that, you know, have, has influencers, has creators, and that can, like, put a message out in, um, in 24 hours to, like, thousands of people. I don't think that's a waste of time. There's certainly no other platform that commands your attention like Snapchat does. Yes. Uh, if you're in marketing or social media and you're still not sure about Snapchat, you're stupid and you should quit your job and never work in marketing or social media ever again. So like that, the, the fact that you even ask that question signifies that you are in the wrong industry. So you were just, you didn't actually oh. ask no, that, that question. No, that was oh. <laughs> I know, I'm, well, guys, I gotta go. Okay. We should talk about like discovery on Snapchat. Maybe Snapchat will like listen to us. What? User discovery. Yeah, you know, how about, Serene, if I can ask you a question. How did you start to grow on Snapchat? How did, there's no discovery platform, there's there no, no way to... There is no discovery platform. Basically, it's, um, you have to take your audience outside of Snapchat. I basically, like, screenshotted your Snapchat, put you on the website, you became friends with me, and you shouted me out, I shouted you out, I became friends with other people, and it's basically creating this community that help each other grow. But we need something to grow more than that community. People are creating, you, know, you create awesome content, Taylor creates awesome jokes. No, I mean, look. Uh, okay, like, never mind, don't follow him. I'm just I <laughs> um, And, like, there's so much and like and and Snapchat has this Discover channel with awesome content, but they're not supporting you know like this raw content that that creators from everywhere are are creating. And if they want to be like this new social media platform that has you know the news, the the um, the content, I mean they have to start supporting the creators and not just the the paid brands, the repurposed content from other websites. Can I play devil's advocate? Yeah. I Like I've told you, I don't want a discovery option. I think that um, it would lead to too quick of saturation. And what happens so often when there is a discovery option, like what we saw in Vine, is that the, the little pretty teenage boys just so often skyrocket to the top. I think you're a pretty teenage boy. I'm not a teenage boy, <laughs> but... You, you don't want to grow. <laughs> Um, no, I, I like I, I think oversaturation is is such an easy thing to happen. It's with not oversaturation because like on Netflix you have like thousands of stuff, but you only have a few ones. People are going to be more selective, but if you'll it's an be editorial discover page. That's different than a popular page. I would say an editorial discover page would be something that I would support. But anything that's like popular on Snapchat is super gross to me. I think it would be interesting to see what would happen, given that the platform is so established right now introducing it this late in the game. It would be uh, really a game changer. I mean, Vine had started out with that. Um, He's sorry, he oh. forgot his phone. Do you mind oh. if I grab that? Oh, we should have oh, stolen it and like went on a Snapchat. Well, Vine yeah, took we can make a while to get a popular page. Like, Just didn't it? Year, I, think I think so. Year. And well, they have all the rise yeah, and I, I mean just the ability to the, the searchability, um, yeah, and and sharing and having any sort of metrics tied to your content. Uh, yeah, really like loops just came. One question I had for you guys is, when do you think Snapchat will show views to public? So like we know how many views we get, but when do you think Snapchat will show the public how many views we I have? I think the keeping the public um, the views private is actually like less social like for people who are not influencing they don't want to show their views to the public because it's, so do you not think that they'll show views to public i don't think they should because it's like you know there's billions of people following it and maybe like a hundred i don't know influencers and like we want to show our views to the public but the other people don't want to show that they only have like 17 views or 17 of their friends do it so you know, I know like snapchat influencers with like 17 people watching that's 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 a problem. Yeah, but you know, it's 
you have to like think about how other people are using it too. I mean, like there's the influencer part, and then there's the other part. I mean, like what do you what do you do with the other billion of people that doesn't want to show their views and doesn't want to be like Facebook that because it's like Snapchat is popular because you can't see the likes, you can't see the views, and people can just post freely, and that's what that's what's so attractive about Snapchat. If you take that away and you know cater fully to the influencers, then um, it's going to lose its magic and it's going to become the Facebook and Instagram and stuff. Yeah, I don't think it'll ever. Um, I don't think that they will ever make that information public. Um, really? Just be, oh. well, it's something that we care about, but nobody else really cares about. Yeah. And you just look at what happened with your score. Score was something that used to be very visible. You didn't have to follow someone or have them follow you back to see their Snapchat score, which is how many snaps you've received and opened, mm -hmm. in addition to how many snaps, individual snaps you have sent. But And now that has something that has even become more restricted in how you can view it. That person, you have to follow them, and they have to follow you back for you to be able to see their... Snapchat score. So, given that information alone, that they're already starting to withhold some of that, um, some of those metrics. I don't think they would ever come out and make views and screenshots something that everyone could say. So, like, I guess, are we watching Snapchat kind of evolve mainly into just back to a messaging messaging platform again? I think it always was a messaging platform. That was their main goal, and certainly with the Chat 2.0 upgrade, which really seamless and healthy. I mean, it's, it's a really good update. It's really cool. Um, I, I think that they're solidifying their place as a competitor to Facebook Messenger and um, uh, what's it, uh, WhatsApp. WhatsApp, yeah. Um, so, like, here's a crazy question. Do you think that we would ever see them take away stores? No, no, because it's the only thing that makes it a viable option for brands. You don't see brands doing anything effective on WeChat or Facebook Messenger. Yeah. Those purely messaging apps aren't a territory that brands have a viable play in, at least right now in anything that I've seen. So, I mean, stories is what made Discover possible, what right. made any sort of publishing um, possible on there. Obviously, so, we survive off the stories, mm. but like... Yeah, absolutely. We don't have to, you know, send snaps to every single person, which back in the day, that's exactly what we would do, and learning that you can only send to 200 people at a time. And Platko's OG, by the way. OG. What's OG? It means original. Gang. What does a, a original, original gangster? Is that what it means? Uh, <laughs> I was like, OG. Like, oh, like yeah. OG I hit, okay, I got it right. No? Next. Shake him ahead of you. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, do you have another question? Uh, or? That was super interesting. Okay. I just wanted to get the, yeah. get the discussion started. You know. Any final thoughts? Oh, usually on the show, we do a question of the day for the community, and everybody answers it in the comments on Facebook and YouTube. So maybe each of you could ask a question of the day, and we'll have three today. Do you huge. follow me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you don't, C-Y-R-E-N-E-Q. Cool. We'll I, mm -hmm. I have a good question. <laughs> yeah. um, I have two, and maybe I'll give you my second one. Okay. Um, so first question. Um, the, there are two types of uh, content on Snapchat. There's the kind that's highly refined with music and filters and very much a storytelling um, piece of content. Um, and then there's the day-to-day, -day, the stuff that Gary does. Um, and what I'm wondering is how the general public feels about that highly refined, almost outside of the scope of what Snapchat was intended for type of content. Is that something that you like or is the, the more live streaming um, you know, no second chance, just take it, post it. Is that more something that you enjoy? What kind of content do you like better? That's a good question. So that I can do it. <laughs> well, so what's your other question? Um, Can't top okay, that question. Okay, okay. Um, have you ever unfollowed someone on Snapchat? If so, why? I unfollowed DJ Khaled. I unfollowed him the other oh, day. Yeah. I got yeah. bored. I, I can only watch him with his flowers so many I times. I got bored. Whoa. Like, yeah. I, I, Bless up. Maybe, yeah. I mean, I maybe love him, but his story's really long, and now with the autoplay. So you yeah. basically unfollowed him. I did. Okay, so did you? Yes. Okay. Maybe that's why you need refined content and you need everyday content. There's not choosing both. You need to just mix it up, or else you can get unfollowed. There's the answer to your question. Wow. Uh, my question <laughs> that I was going to ask Gary, but we didn't have time, was uh, what do you think will be the first social media? platform uh, in terms of like what it will entail on VR. That that's what I'm very curious about right now because it's any day now we there will be that first platform and everybody's going to get on it day 1 and that's going to be all the future celebrities are going to be VR celebrities and it's like who's going to be that? <laughs> 
I, I always think like five years down the road. Well, well I can tell you if you're going to ask Gary that question, um, you would probably be able to find the answer in whether or not he's investing in any yeah. um, VR platforms. But um, I certainly don't think that it's anywhere near. Um, there might be something that pops up, but I don't think there's anything that's going to really have traction for at least five years. Um, I, have a, I have a question. <laughs> How do you find people to follow that are not your friends on Snapchat? I go to the eleventh second dot com. Matt, yes. yes. Matt, props for Cyrene. Has, she's done more for the Snapchat community of artists and storytellers Thank and you. influencers than any by the eleventh second dot com. Really, it was the discover section in Snapchat that was non-existent and it's an amazing platform where you should go and look at all fantastic Snapchatters if to follow. If I was you, I would go to like the 11second.com. Oh, okay. Oh. We're done. We're done. <laughs> right. Oh, wait. I want to show you the, the picture that I drew of Gary. Hold on. Wait. It's Gary Vaynerchuk. Does it look like him? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually M. Placo. <laughs> they look like each other. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, it only looks exactly like him. That's so. freaking crazy. That's really good. Yeah.